welcome back to my channel guys how are y'all doing well welcome to vlogmas it's raining so hard here in guyana well in dry strong today we're going to do a bit of adventuring i'm going to go up the suicide highway so you will see a bit of that i hope everyone's enjoying their day so gems we're starting off today's vlog we're leaving Georgetown to head up onto the Linden Seuss Dyke Highway. Once again, Guyana is flooded and there is word spreading that the rain will fall until anywhere between mid-February and late January. So please pray for your loved ones in Guyana. And if you're in Guyana facing this flood water, I'm praying for you guys as well as I'm praying for myself this is beyond ridiculous i don't know is there anyone who could say what is the solution to all of this water it's everywhere like i went to town today and water is all over the place but you know that wouldn't stop guyanese from doing what they have to do nonetheless we're um heading towards linden today now let me just give you a little bit of history of the linden Dyke highway if this is something you're interested in stay listening to the vlog because it's mostly gonna be banter about linden or Seuss Dyke or the linden Dyke highway this article that was written by let me see if there is no it just says beston that consultancy projects so first opened in 1969 the Linden Suzdike Highway is the main route. It connects the, connects the village of Suzdike on the eastern bank of Guyana's famed Demerara River to the mining town of Linden. After so many years in operation, the highway started showing signs of wear and tear on Work Services Group, acting on behalf of the government of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana engaged Beston to conduct both the feasibility study as well as the designs for the rehabilitation of the traveling road. Now it says or it goes on to say that one of the key issues presented was the improvement of road safety and the rehabilitation of the pavement. Beston's final design covers all activities necessary to accomplish a detailed design of the current roadway to a paved two-lane undivided road with paved shoulders designed for speeds of 80 to 100 kilometers per hour now this is based on national standards with modifications however as necessary to suit local conditions and needs the descriptive piece goes on to say this multi-million phase process included conducting detailed technical and economic feasibility and environmental and social impact assessment reports conducting the topographical surveys and reviewing government cadastral sheets and reviewing all available information that will lead to the preparation of detailed designs drawings and technical specifications as necessary for all civil electrical structural works and all road countermeasures under the project so it's fascinating to know that um this road leads to so many places and the road that is the intersection between Linden and the Linden Suicide Highway gives access to many different regions of Guyana and I only learned about this yesterday. The write-on by Beston goes on to say that the Suicide Linden Highway was a historical project for the Beston team. To date, it is the longest continuous roadway that they have designed. Rising to the challenge of the job, Beston invested in a drone and trained their team in new technology. They manually set ground control points, collected drone flight data, then they processed that data through virtual surveyors, a program that allowed the surveys to be completed in a substantially shorter period of time. Now, as it eliminated the need to dispatch surveyors into tedious, lengthy, and even potentially dangerous conditions, although there was, ne was the necessary learning curve that comes with any new technology, we are glad to have 
implemented it as our experience gained well translate into drastically reduced timelines on future projects based on ended their statement now we're gonna go or we're gonna dive a little into the history of um linden and um this is an article that i found online in the guyana chronicle it was dated in 2016 the fourth month the 28th day and it reads linden celebrates 46 years as a tongue a glimpse in history and in it or rather in the article there is a mashramani picture of linden in 1970 and it appears that um there are people in a boat they're surrounded by um other people i'll try to insert that photo here now as the mining town of linden celebrates its 46th birthday coupled with the 50th anniversary celebration and 100 years of bauxite mining in the region the article reads a trail of the tongue's history and hallmarks would furnish the ill-informed of the tongue's involvement over the centuries from a blatta bleeding settlement to once being the breadbasket of Guyana. Often mistaken for a depressed and dusty township where opportunities are limited and entertainment is basic, the rich history of Linden has been cast aside, leaving the younger generation ignorant of what built this third four square mile town, located 66 miles up the Demerara River. The steep sandy hills, the refreshing black water creeks, the unlimited fat poke trees, pockets of blue lakes and congless valleys are smeared with a permeation of thick bauxite dust, often giving a false impression of what Linden is and most importantly, what Linden was. As facts have it, Linden before becoming a township was deemed the breadbasket of Guyana. As many flocked the bauxite mining tongue to secure a lucrative job with the then bauxite company, Demba, which stands for Demerara Bauxite Company. Affluence permeated the tongue, which was managed by the white expatriates, who made it clear that the tongue's flourishing resulted from the materializing of their intuition that wealth was found in the soil. Now, Demba took charge of the entire development of Linden, which ranged from building schools, churches, clubs, hospitals, recreational halls, and even houses for the employees. The establishment of a tongue. Even as a tongue evolved to one of the most sought after for internal migration, it only became a tongue on the April 29, 1970, when the local authority established supernumerary constabulary whose members were constituted as tongue constables. The 55 square miles or 85 square kilometers was legally constituted a town called Linden. The genesis of this establishment started in 1959 when surveyor Mr. L. L. Birchich sought to barter the area. He commenced on the western shore now called Wismer and Christianburg, which originally was home to the Dutch who engaged in Balato bleeding. The economic balance shifted in 1966 with the discovery of bauxite by George Bain Mackenzie, whom the ward of Mackenzie of the eastern bank of the river was named after. Mackenzie became the central of Linden with the establishment of the bauxite company, which was a subsidiary of the Aluminum Company of Canada, also known as Alcon. The community constructed pristine houses for senior staff and the layout of the ward was distinct since every major road was strategically laid out. Only company employees resided in Mackenzie and some communities such as Richmond Hill and Watuka was only occupied by expatriates. As history has it, the locals had to acquire an official pass to enter the area and only during the day were they allowed access. Families from the depth and breadth of Guyana flocked Linden to experience the wealth that emerged from bauxite mining. In Amelia's ward, there can be found an avenue called Hope Town Square, where all of the families hail from the village of Hope Town in West Coast Burbies to seek employment at the company. The Mackenzie Man, as the employers were called, 
was immediately identified from their mode of dress and high living when visiting other regions. The great influx of people from all across Guyana resulting, resulted rather in Linden possessing a rich heritage as there was a mi mixture of ethnicity, culture, religion and beliefs to form one tongue of people. As a result of this genesis, Linden pioneered several national events such as Mashramani, Tongue Week, JCs, national football competitions, among others. The first school in Mackenzie was built in 1924, while the first hospital was built in 1925. A shopping plaza began operations in 1941, and eight years after the town was graced with its first commercial bank. Now in 1951, the Mackenzie Sports Club was laid out and the first public cinema opened its doors. Development of the Municipality In 1970, the Mayor and Town Council appointed the first Mayor, Mr. Egbert Benjamin, whose tenure concluded in 1973. Ms. Gloria Lane was his successor, followed by Mr. Hugh Harris, Mr. Ashton Allen, Mrs. Evelyn Dodson, Mr. Patrick Haynes, Mr. Abdul Qadir, and Mr. Stanley Smith. Mr. Smith's tenure, however, ended in 2003, and an interim management committee was enacted, led by Mr. Oren Gordon, until the 2016 local government elections, which allowed for the appointment of the 10th and present mayor, Carwin Holland. Now, with the decline in bauxite production, the town's economy was spiraled to the all-time low and cannot exclusively depend on what is currently produced compared to years ago. The un unemployment rate in Linden is above 70%. And with limited career opportunities, many youths migrate after completing their secondary education. The newly elected municipality is seeking avenues to stimulate the economy through agriculture, enterprising and tourism so that Linden would return to the way it used to be, the breadbasket of the Caribbean. So yep, that was the article. Um, I'm not seeing here who wrote the article, but that was the article. I am so happy that I actually read that because it enlightened me so much on what Linden is and its story and its people and how it came to be it's so fascinating you know i was one that didn't like much history in school but my history teacher saw that some spark in me so she um advised me to write it i got a grade two um i think history comes normal to me but i don't find that that is where my passion is nonetheless um Yes, Linden is quite interesting. However, on this particular day, we did not exactly go into Linden. We stopped at the um, the crossroad, you would call it. Yeah, we stopped there and we visited a few places along the, the, the way, you know. You will see in the later clips, I did a little picture taking we stopped to get fruits and um directions and so on so yeah guys i think i am going to stop speaking here and just let you enjoy the rest of the scenery because um we're still on the Sus Dyke highway so yeah i want you to just enjoy and take in the breathtaking place that is um, the Linden Seuss Dyke Highway and then now we're actually passing the intersection between Linden and Tamiri so in the next direction that's taking you to Tamiri where the airport is so we're on our way to the Linden intersection and to my surprise here was also flood in my head flooded sorry in my head I thought that you know because of the altitude that there wouldn't be water but remember um as you go up there is always a part that is below so the parts that were below like here 
would have collected all the water runoff from all the other places so when we were coming back it had a lot of traffic here nonetheless guys thanks for watching today's vlog and i do hope that you make it to the end so that you can see the fruits and so on and my little um picture taking moment <laughs> this was a nice experience a nice trip to learn and i do hope that you enjoy my narration and that you're safe with your families that everyone is cozy and at home and if not i'm going to offer a special prayer for you tonight that your shoulders are lightened and that your worries are taken even if just for a bit remember to like share comment and subscribe to my channel your subscribing is helping my channel to grow your liking and sharing is also bringing in new subscribers um, I have a goal of a thousand subscribers to reach by the end of this month I do hope that I can attain that if not early next year so once again guys thank you for consuming so much of my content and put on your notification bell so that you will see what's next until next time my beautiful friends my handsome friends and my friends this is the Guyanese gem saying bye
Mira, esa no se lo quiero. Mata aquí, driving. 